You know, and he okay. said to me then, if, if you do an apprenticeship in plumbing, you'll never be out of work and you'll earn loads of money. Gotcha. Like, you know, one of the things I regret is that I didn't think big enough at the time. You, you, you tend to... Oh, really? Well, I mean, look at it now. I mean, we had... When the well, well you, the size of him looking plumbers, I would say, are you are you, are you sure? I think that's... Oh, you were pretty I'm, big. You think you could have been bigger? Well, it well, could have been bigger, yeah. Could have, I mean, we was turning over 50 mil and we was employing about 450 people. Um. And uh, I look back now and I could have had that double, double the amount of everything. Your business is good as whoever you employ. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that takes a lot. Yeah, I mean, you're always going to get wrong. You're, you're saying it because you're, you're... Okay. You know, you have to have a system to follow. Yeah, okay. And if you do it the right way, then that's the best way. Okay. Nice. Going back on that school, on the school thing, um, I'll just come out with a solid question. <laughs> do, you, do you, do you, I'm going to take a deep breath. One thing that we find a lot in the news, we've got this LBGT, we've got differences in cultures one thing that i see now is kids and people are allowed to do what they want yeah um which in work can be a problem um and it maybe not so much a problem the question i've got for you is because we do live in the uk and it is a christian country yeah do you think the removal of god from the schools for children to be able to be and do what they want becoming a problem short term and problem long term i know at the moment well, i think both I think it's short term and long term, you know. But evidently, we've got to be more sort of diverse. Diverse in yeah, uh, people. So I, I get the side of it, mm. but you know, because you, you, you see, obviously, what you're doing at the moment, personally and in business, stepping away from Pimlico, you see a different side to a lot of us. Yeah. Um, I see a different side, yeah. and I have young, a young daughter, and it's it's almost to the stage where you think, well, what is the future looking like with that attitude? Yeah, because that's right. Yeah. We all understand equality is important and we all understand that, you know, people, if they want to be people or want to do yeah. this, you know, um, they, well, they can, but legally they can, but it does seem to promote an attitude. Of course it does. An I attitude mean, of whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. As a negative anyway. There's obviously... I mean, you're, you're right on that. And the I'm fact treading that carefully because I don't want to, we don't want well, to, no, no, I don't no, want to no. insult anyone, but oh. it has created an attitude and it's it in this country, it's accepted here, some countries around the world it still isn't accepted. Yeah. And they're not having problems that we might be That's having. That's right. Look, look, undoubtedly stands in schools have dropped and, and, and not having, you know, this proper sort of set of rules again, I'm going to say. Um, of course, it, and, and the fact that you've asked the question, you already know the answer. And, I know um, the answer, but you've got a really good uh, perception on this because you work to systems. And yeah. there seems to be a pull from the system to now just... That's right, all well, in anything, do, but yeah. you know, you're not going to change like every school youngster, but there's, there's a hell of a lot of them in, in that school or class that want to go to work and want to do an apprenticeship and they want to succeed. Not, not all of them are lazy, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. And you know, you know that, and, and I'm just trying to sort of say, so as much as the, a lot of them have got the attitude problem, yeah. um, you know, if they've got a job, they would change. A job, I, I say, look, for me, education started when I left school. Okay. And, and, and I think that's what you've got to drive into youngsters. They ain't got to be that academic. They ain't got to be that good at anything. All they've got to do is follow a system yeah. and, and have a bit of drive and infusion. Well, your, your apprenticeship uh, analogy or, or process that you're suggesting with the government incentive kind of works because if people want to go down that route with the attitude, it's not really going to get them any far where it comes right. to getting an apprenticeship. Yeah, that's it. Um, and attitude, it almost puts a stop on it to some extent. The, the only sort of caveat, I suppose, is as an employer... If you're then, as an employer, being told to drop your own beliefs or your own morals to suit the current, yeah, well, look, look, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, you've got to also remember that, you know, if you're running a business, you've got to be in control of it. Mm -hmm. And when you get the tail wagging the dog, then you've lost it. So, you know, you, you just, you just, I, I'm saying it as if it's simple, but I'm saying is that, that there's some good people out there, mm -hmm. and you know, if you went to a school and there's let 10 youngsters come and work for you and after a couple of days a few still had bad attitude they, they would have to move them on and work with the ones that want to work for sure but again you've got to, 
you know, they, they just don't know what the rewards are of working. I mean, I, I, I respect anyone that goes to work mm -hmm. and I feel sorry for people that can't work, like generally that have got disabilities mm -hmm. or whatever, but the lazy people that don't want to go to work and just scrounge around, I, I've got no time for them. But mm -hmm. I'm convinced that youngsters um, shown a, a bit of direction. Put it like this, with this Bill Ellis, when I look back on it, this is how simple it was. Well, when I'm explaining to a youngster now of, you know, how to be successful or how to, you know, mm -hmm. be part of society, the first step is getting a job. Mm -hmm. And then and then from there, it, it, you, you, you then can grow from there kind of thing. And look, how many youngsters have started off as making tea and then all of a sudden they own this big company? Oh, of course. You've got to start somewhere, but mm -hmm. it's just a matter of, of... If I was simplifying it, I would say to a youngster, there's a wrong road and a right road. Mm -hmm. Wrong road, you know it's going to lead to prison, whatever, and all the bits with it. And the right road, there's a big pot of gold there. Mm -hmm. But you've got to follow a system to get to it. So that system, work, influence? Yeah. Well, the, I mean, it's simple as that. One road... the, 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 the sort of sad thing is not everyone is going to have a Bill Ellis. Not everyone's going to be what? Have a Bill Ellis to look up to. That's right. And that's sometimes a challenge because... They've not seen that. Uh, They've you, not seen you're, you're exactly right. You're and, exactly right. And but yeah, I suppose having the podcast and having yeah. it, it has made it easier to, for people to see, see the bill yeah. editors. Yeah, look, look, you, you, that's exactly what I'm getting at. I'm just it's simplifying saying two rows, wrong road, right road, mm. pot of gold, prison, or yeah. whatever. And, you know, because the problem is a lot of people complicate things. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying is, you know, it doesn't matter what job you get whether it's stacking shelves or whether you be, you know, working in a bank. Just get in the workplace and it's a starting point. But the schools have got to, you know, drop this stupid university idea mm -hmm. and start, like, saying to people, look, there's people... You're, you're, I mean, mm -hmm. any plumber will earn more it's, than it's any almost, bank It's almost... Because I know there's a... Well, it's fact. It's not conspiracy, but universities... You know, banks love universities because, obviously, they get nice, long-paying loans paid. But there's no harm in swivelling that to funding. That's right. It, there's no, it's, 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 it's a, a straight actually, pillar. Look, well, it's, it's, same thing, you're right, because, you know, most of them that go to university because they haven't had to pay for it, they just f about it anyhow, you know what I mean? And not all of them, but, you know, it's... There's, it's, a, it's, a, there's a small portion where they, there is, a, there is a, yeah. a, a life, a lifestyle to commit with, you know, to keep up with in uni, because well, I that, suppose that, first year you about. I wouldn't have a clue, but I mean, well, you know, I mean, I remember speaking to someone and, and we was arguing what's the best, like, university or whatever, and he went, well, I probably agree. I mean, he, he was like an East London guy, Mickey Flanagan, funny enough, the um, Oh, wow, comedian. Oh, OK. And we, he's we, not a uni boy, sure. He did, did he yeah, go to uni? Yeah, he went to university, okay. and so even though he's an East London guy, and we was having a, a debate on the radio, uh, I've done a few things with him on it, and he said, you know, he said, to be honest, for the first two years, I was drunk. <laughs> oh, man. And, and, and the first well, year's death. We, yeah. I've been to a few uni parties, even though I've not been to uni. And yeah, good yeah. parties. And then, they're and designed for uni, people in uni. Eh? You have a good time in the clubs, they're designed them for the first years. Yeah, well, I, I mean, all, all I'm trying to say is that what, why would you pay all that dosh and, you know, you could be earning while you're learning? Yeah. And then all I'm saying with Mickey Fay, in the end, he said to me, to be honest, Charlie, I agree with you. So I come from East London. He said, and I was looked on as a wrong one because I went to university around there, you know what I mean? Okay. So he looked on as a wrong and he said, but. You know, all I've done was piss balled about there. Gotcha. You know what I mean? And and I'm saying is, you know, there's a there's, there's life without a degree, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I, I'm only here today and, and where I am today for two reasons. Bill Ellis, you could say, or, or, or role model, but undoubtedly the apprenticeship. If I didn't do an apprenticeship, then I wouldn't be here. Wow. Because I want to say I wanted to leave a thousand times. And and it ties you in, and then it starts to sort. You know, you're following a system. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I I completely. You know get what that. I mean? Because you, I mean. you university, you don't tend to have that. I suppose. Obviously, we'll put this to one side. This is HVAC. If you are a doctor or a nurse, you know, if there are doctors' apprenticeships oh. or things, fine. But if you have to go to uni for that, you probably will have to go to uni for that. But your systems and your processes, you don't get in your first two years at uni. In a trade, you do. Yeah, I mean, you're earning while you're learning, and I'm saying because there's a massive shortage of trades. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of I, I think, and I don't know if you'd agree with this, that the next five years, especially with a shortage of people, I actually think that there might be a flip where to be a manager, that's not where the money is. It's actually to be, because well, there was, trade, it's, it's it, already, it would be back to the trades. Well, it's already Because it, it seems to... Well, I, I think it's already has. I mean, I think, you know, I think back in, I think we've done posh plumbers where a lot of bankers left the bank okay. and wanted to be a tradesman. 
And I, and I think that... Oh, did you? You had that? Yeah, we done okay. that. Yeah, well, we done a big documentary on it called Posh Plumbers, and uh, they couldn't wait to get out of the bank or whatever and, and get a proper job and earn good money. <laughs> okay. um, so I think it's already there. It's just trying to, like, convince people that how successful you can be Being by a... doing an apprenticeship. Uh, like, when I say it doesn't matter what you're doing, and I don't mean to say stacking shelves, but, you know, something that leads to sort of a skill or something like... You, you, you can grow into the, you uh, can grow into the role. And, yeah. and, but the real thing is, is, is the first thing is getting a job. Mm -hmm. If you happen to get an apprenticeship, it's like, it's like you can't go wrong if you yeah. follow the system. I'm you know what I mean? The end yeah, result sure. is you'll be out earning load of dosh, or you, you'll have a nice steady job in a, in a good company mm -hmm. that, that have keep, keeps you going. And, and that's the thing, the thing that a lot of youngsters can't see. You know what I mean? They can't see the... I mean, as I said to you, the value of, of, of like getting tied in on something, yeah. I think it's priceless. You know, and I say, I know I wouldn't be here now because I remember I think I was getting two bob an hour, 10 pence an hour as an apprentice, which is wrong. And, and I think I was getting three quid a week or something. And I had mates of mine was working in the shop and getting 12 quid a week. Okay. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm stupid, am I? What's wrong with me? Okay. And then someone said to me, what you don't earn now as an apprentice, you'll earn later. And Smart. that sunk in. Smart. And, I, and I would say that to a young said, but Smart. of course we've got to make, we've got to, you know, make it more interesting as an apprenticeship. And, and, and the way to make it interesting is not giving them like slaves money. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I well, mean, what we, yeah. So what I come across when we interview apprenticeship, uh, apprentices or, or for the role, we have a lot of people that I think last year we had like 20, we took on two. Majority of them worked at Tesco's or Sainsbury's doing deliveries, yeah, loading vans. And the reason was because they, they left school and they didn't actually know what they want to do. That's they it. didn't want to go to uni. So what they did, they thought, well, I need some money. I'll get a job. Pay's okay. Yeah. I've gone from earning nothing to now earning what I'm earning. And they've taken the step back and gone for an apprenticeship role. Yeah. So I suppose you can nip that in the bud by rolling it straight out of well, year 11 that, at school. That's what I'm saying. The, you know, to, get the, to get it right with youngsters, it's got to be a government-funded apprenticeship. There's no other way. Mm. If not, it's going down and down and down. Yeah. And, you know, look, put it like this. If I was working with the government and I was their apprenticeship sort of style or something, and I would put that system in and it would solve so, so many problems. I'll, go, I'll give you an example. When Boris was going for mayor for the like first time, yeah. he used to come around there building, like, like doing interviews, etc. Okay. And he said to me, you know, air, 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 I think there was riots on the streets then, you know what I mean, was going on. Oh, and, it was then, was it? Uh, right, yeah. okay. And, and he said to me, air, do you, air, air can I cut down crime on the street? And mm -hmm. I said, simple, get my job. Simple solution, get my job. <laughs> and, and that's it because, you know... That's it, actually quite a positive answer because it would... It, the, another, well, it, another answer to that would be make the prisons harder. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you know, yeah, but, you, but, but, but you're actually... Preventing it's, it, it, Yeah, it? you're correct, yes. yeah. And... and, and and I said, it was simple. I said, you don't get youngsters that are in the workplace going around stabbing people. Yeah, you, you know, okay. you know, yeah, a majority yeah, sure, of them. You know, yeah, I mean, on. every time they, 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 they see them, they go, I've got nothing to do. I'm hanging about with my, I ain't got a job. Mm. And I'm saying, I'm saying that, that like, a job is, is, you know, you're going to have it for the next 50 years and it's going to lead you to the path. It's going to lead you to the pot of gold or a lovely life. Yeah. And, and, but, but they need help. They need to stop promoting universities and get real. And 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 and, and mm -hmm. you know put people in where I think that's a bit of a fight, Charlie, to get to get them to pivot. Do you think? Where's the breaking point for that to happen? Because that what you're suggesting really does need to happen. Well, to be honest, all you've got to do is get the right prime minister that understands it. You know, what I mean, so if you get more of a working class prime minister, someone that understands apprentices. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think Osborne and who was it? Do we, Charlie? You're obviously quite in with that. I don't think we've got anyone on the table with that attitude. Johnny, Johnny Mercer's about the nearest, yeah. Really? The army man, yeah. Is he Tory? Labour? Not that we're going to say... Uh, Tory. He's Tory. Yeah. So he's the most... Well, to me, he's... he's I mean, Lee Anderson's another great down-to-earth guy. Okay, You okay. know what I mean? And um, you need more working-class people to be involved in politics mm -hmm. that, can, that can be real and, and, and you not come from, like, a, a silver spoon background. For sure. And, um, does you know, the, silver, the silver spoon approach, let's call it that, because yeah. it is what it is. That seems to be the business of bringing people over, doesn't it? That's bringing people over to do the work rather than building within. As in, well, exactly, yeah. As yeah. in, you know, yeah. we can yeah, have a conversation course, yeah. about, which yeah. I've had several times now, about Indians. You know, it's a, to have a visa in the UK from yeah. India now, I think it's two weeks. You, you apply and it's 
there's a lot of Indians in the UK. I don't know if you go yeah. to an event now. Well, you know, I mean, you go to the football years ago, it'd be agency staff or the horses. Yeah. You'd have now the eight, they're all yeah. I mean, um, and which is absolutely fine, but that seems to be the quick solution. Well, yeah. Bring people over yeah. here to to do rather than actually train from them. the ground yeah. up and train. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm saying with you know you could I could sit here with ten prime ministers like over the years, and I've told them I've told three or four of them that's what you need to do, and I think Cameron. Half had it right because he, he he was like building up to getting three million apprentices a year and it was going well. Yeah. The last lot have got no idea at all. They've just totally took you know they've come away from it. Mm -hmm. And and you know we've got to stop pushing the university nonsense. You know what I mean? You've just got yeah. it's as simple as that. But of course you know because these people have gone to university, Correct. they want to tell There's, the next one to go to university. For sure, for sure. And and you know you that's why I'm saying you've got to have more working class people in politics or. Or people that have done the journey, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, like mm -hmm. as you say, yeah, whatever everybody says about me, you know, I started there and I finished there. And you can't take that away from me. And which means that I'm not saying that it works for everybody, mm -hmm. but there's, a, there's, you know, wrong road, right road. Of course, the, dire the direction and drive, you know, not everyone wants the pot of gold and the flashy element, but the, the road of actually succeeding and being good at what you do yeah. is the right road. Well, the, the, say the first step, let's say for me, it doesn't matter if you're a road sweeper or a bank manager, the most important thing is to get a job. Mm. And from there, and, 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 and from there, you can only build, you can only go yeah. forward. And, and we've just got to, you know, convince the youngsters that that's the way forward. When mm -hmm. I say convince them, and I think the best way to convince them is that, you know, normal people, you know, it's life without a degree. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I had brains, I'd be dangerous. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't need brains <laughs> to be successful. Yeah. What you do need is drive, enthusiasm, the willpower, the want to succeed, want to better your life. And a lot of these youngsters have got that. They've already got that. You know what I mean? Mm. They, they're not stupid. I mean, when they look it's at... It's kind of categorising it and putting it into... Yeah, it's you know, just, because yeah, it's, it it's takes just, a lot of effort to be lazy. You know, it also take, you know, it also takes a lot of effort to get up to no good. It's a lot of effort and there's a lot of drive in being yeah, naughty. Course. But you, I'm, but I'm just saying a lot... When I, what I see of the youngsters, it's all very, you know, the, the lots of them have got this bad attitude, but so many of them, like, they, they, like the word entrepreneur, they love, don't they? You mm. know what I mean? And I, I actually think it's a, you badly used the word because, you know, I've spoken to youngsters and like, I talk to that and I say to them, what do you do like? And they go, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Like, I say, what do you do? They say, oh, I made a plate of cheese sandwiches. You're, uh, I completely agree with that. Sometimes yeah. I really detest the word yeah. because people use it in such... Uh, the, the context is so, the, the value is so low where, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, okay. I sell uh, yeah. cakes. And you're, yeah. like, exactly. you're like, you're like, dude, you're not an yeah. entrepreneur. But, but, you just but, sell fairy cakes. Well, it is, but, but I'm trying to sort of say is, you know, there's nothing wrong with someone wanting to be successful, mm -hmm. but, you know, you, you've, what's the word I'm trying to say is, you know, I don't use the word entrepreneur. What I would say is that, you know, I, I run a plumbing company, a successful plumbing company. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when, when people ask me all the time, I've never used the word entrepreneur, but they, you know, it, it, it's too widely used. But, I mean, that's not what it's about, kind of thing. The word don't really matter. It's all, it's all about, it's a for me, anyhow, yeah, yeah. is getting in the workplace. Okay. The youngsters so so with, uh, with your experience and what, you've, what you know in plumbing and what you've done as, a, as Pimlico, if you were to sit down with 35-year-old Charlie Plummins now, he's sitting right there, mm. Would you change things to what thirty-five-year-old Charlie Plummins did? Charlie I'll, 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 yeah, did. I'll, I think that you know you what know, what what would I change? Which, Just yeah, li as in life de life decisions, business decisions, peer groups. You know, well, I think because hindsight, changed. you've got uh, uh, you know, with age, we have hindsight. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably change a lot of things, like you know, like you know, um, you know, I, I would just say, you know, I think. Yeah, Pimlico, it, it, what was Pimlico like when you were 35 years old? Yeah, it, it was just basic normal company. And then, uh, you know, just like plodding along kind of thing. And uh, and then I say we nearly went bust, I think, in early 1990s and so changed you, everything. Okay, okay. And it was like a box. If he goes down, you know, that changes the fight. Mm -hmm. if, if, he, if he don't get up, he's out of the game. If he gets up, he's got to step it up. And sure. I think that's the same with going bankrupt. Okay. You know, when you're down, you're nearly gone. So we changed everything. So were you around 35 years old when that happened? Uh, I'm probably a bit older, I would think. Okay. Yeah. So your um, advice now would have been to, at that stage, just keep fighting, well, just keep going. Yeah, never give in. I mean, but you've got to have that attitude. But if it, if you're on a loser, I mean, put it like this. Because um, you're saying that, but going through that probably was. Oh, going through that's the worst like, part. I mean, <laughs> you can say it with words, but what goes with 
that oh, is I mean the like, pain is probably not a lot of people feel that's that. Right. I mean if I, it, even though I wish I didn't have gone through it because we were so I was so close to using my house, my business, mm-hmm. and everything else in your health and everything like yeah. that. And then you know we went and see a liquidator myself and I've got I changed everyone new account and, and my goodness okay this got first that liquidator back. said. Uh, he just needs a, a simple question. He said, how much have you got? Nothing. How much do you owe about half a mil? Right, simple. You give me three grand, go bust, start again kind of thing. And and then and then my accountant guy at the time, he said, look, I'm going to get a second opinion because we're turning over a million pounds. He said, and uh, you, on that route, I'm going to lose my house and yep. I'm going to lose the business. Okay. Went to see another guy and he went, well, you need to fight it. He said, because if you don't, he said, you're going to lose your... You're going to lose it all in here. He said, so why not fight for it? Mm-hmm. And so he, he gave us that enthusiasm. And he said, look, it's going to be tough. But if you get through it and you come out the other side, you're going to be so much stronger for it. And that's probably why my attitude is what it is, like, kind of thing. In other words, nothing ain't going to stop us being successful. OK. And, uh, but, you know, nearly going bankrupt is... I don't wish it on anybody, but believe me, it's a, it's a frightening experience. What, what your, the example that you've just given is there's some honour with that because the amount of people that set... and you've, I'm, I'm certain you've come across many people like it and they all have the same attitude. They set themselves up to fail on purpose. Yeah. And we see it a lot at the moment with a lot of big M&E companies. Yeah. They're doing really well last year and then yeah. out of nowhere they go overnight and it was all set up. So you've actually done the complete opposite and times got hard, and you fought your way through it. Yeah, uh, exactly. It. I mean, you know, but but you know, it's, it's, again, it's how simple. how if you had gone bankrupt, um, one would say you'd probably I'd probably say the step, you know, that saying the step back is it is always the step the step back creates the step forward. I think you still yeah. would have fought your way to where you are now, person. If you know, being a better well, man. However, like. I, the, mo- the 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 kick you would have had from it, you know, from being bankrupt would yeah. have. Uh... Well, look, look. When you get yourself in trouble like that, you you you, you make sure that ain't going to happen again. Mm. So you become very cautious. And we made it payment on completion. We was more fussy. We so you got par- Let's say you got paranoid. Was it was it, could you use the word paranoid? Paranoid of getting paid on time. Paranoid for well, for what you could know, most happen. Most people if... go bust because someone owes them money. That's that's the key thing. Majority of people. So. We immediately changed their uh, payment system to mm-hmm. payment on completion, and we we sort of changed the engineers, the you know the sloppier ones that you know weren't so bothered and that, and mm-hmm. you, you, you just change it makes you change everything, and that's why I'm probably so um, to the point with things. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, it's if if you don't get it right, then you're going to go out of business or get bankrupt yeah. or just okay. wasting your time. And mm-hmm. if you get it right, then there's a pot of gold at the end of it. And, and it's not necessarily all about the pot of gold, but you're on the right road kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's it really. But I think the nearly going bust changed me massively. It, it, all of a sudden, I've got to be uh, more serious. You know, business is a serious thing. And I realise also business is a long-term venture. Mm-hmm. You know, all the people that think it's quick, rich overnight, I mean, it, it don't happen like that. But rightly, as I said, this, you know, and that's why sometimes I now believe in second opinions because if I listened to this geezer, then we would have been <laughs> gone. We go to the, the he, he said, the, it was a new account, and, and he said, I, I think we're going to get a second opinion. He said, because we've got to turn over a million pounds, he said, and I can't see that that can't become profitable. Okay. Which meant we wasn't doing it right within. Yep. And the next geezer said, you've got to fight for it. And, and, uh, and that was all I needed, but I, we nearly like went with the other guy. You know, I mean, yeah. it was that close because he given two options, and you know, um, did obviously that, I didn't want to go. Did, bust. did that change you, um, as in personally? Did it change your attitude to something? Oh, definitely. Yeah. There yeah. was a. I think a lot of people don't change personally unless they have a trauma or something yeah, significant no, it, happens it, it in definitely their life. Changed me. I mean, look. So did did you? Would you say you were you were you were comfortable before then? Because that's uh, something which I think well, I, thought, I, I, yeah, ha- I have. I yeah, have it. Yeah, uh, a lot of business yeah. owners have it. Where, when you're vulnerable, sometimes you're you're more dangerous. Or yeah. if you're growing, you're you're dangerous. But when you when things seem to be running okay, it's usually where things you start yeah, well, letting look, things slip. That's right. I, and I'll that's put, personally and in business. You know, um, things can happen personally. We think things are going okay. Let's not even. Of bother. course. I mean, look. You know. I mean, it, it, there's different things that are going to happen in your life. Look, it's a bumpy road to be successful, and it's a bumpy road not to be successful, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And. Uh, you know, it, it's never as straightforward as I'm saying, but but what I learned was that um, you, you sort of you've got you know you've got to hit these lows to come back up kind of 
thing, you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, you know, you're, you you know, in a business, you get sleepless nights, you're worrying about this, should I do this, should I, is it yeah. right, is it wrong, etc. But, you know, you've got, you've got to be a person that's prepared to take chances and have some driving enthusiasm if you want to reach the top. Mm -hmm. If you just want to be along there, there ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, not everyone, not everyone's got to get to the top For of the sure. ladder. You've just got to get on the ladder. Oh, I'm a firm believer that, you know, not everyone wants no, to be. No, I mean, not everyone can be a superstar. But if you're a rock star, the best way of getting to the top is by sticking with your rock, uh, superstar and going on the journey with them. Because a rock star yeah, of course, not yeah. necessarily wants the burden of... Yeah, having to answer the phone in the middle of the night. They want to be the. They want no, to be look, the. No, that's what I said. Um, so look, look. There's leaders and followers. Correct. And and it doesn't matter which one you are. It doesn't doesn't matter. But you know, it's obvious. I'm a leader. So you're what? Um, so what's interesting is you're speaking of 35 year old Charlie Mullins. One thing you would have definitely said is, appreciate the lows. The lows are going to make you lows. Well, big. yeah. I mean, you're going to grow from your lows, and yeah, also, I mean, or, you need them. You can go the opposite way. You can you can. Go bust or nearly go bust, and then go down the pan. Like it does, you know. I think the drive, and, and again, I'll go. I mean, I used to box, so you had discipline there, kind of a bit like a bit like saying the last round. If you don't step it up, he's gonna beat you. Mm. So you have the choice. A lot, you? yeah, okay. And and I think in business, you know, that's what was said to me. They said that look, you could do it, but it's gonna be a tough four or five years. And I said, but when you come out the other side, you'll be so much stronger. And and I'm and I am strong. So who that. who said that? Who would have, or would that would have just been people around you? Uh, that was the liquidator guy, you know what I mean? And, so that's uh, a nice bit uh, Andy of, uh, Cannon, you know, that's he a nice said bit it could be uh, done because the difference was one liquidator just wanted to take you three grand. And this is a true story at the time. There were so many people, this is a gospel truth. As I went there in Bloomsbury Square and it was a, a Jewish fellow, uh, I think it was Lennox Lewis' manager or hmm. something to do with him. And uh, people was queuing up on the stairs to go bankrupt, right, all the way down because it was tough times. Damn. And when, sorry, Charlie, when was that? What was the actual year? Was uh, that about April? early 90s. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that recession. was the, the Thatcher stuff. Yeah. After the eight. Okay, That's so. It. All right, okay. Uh, and I was oh, queuing goodness. up, and, and all, you know, I look back, all he was interested in was taking his three grand. And, like, you know, and I thought, how many of them have like turn, would have turned it round? And mm -hmm. it was only, you know, I have to be on the account with me at the time that I changed. He said, look, I'm going to get a second opinion. I never believed in second opinions, mm -hmm. but if it's a serious thing, Get a second opinion. Interesting. Okay. You know, and, and I'd say, you know, I, I was never a believer of second opinions. Like, boom, that's it. We do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I he said, let's have a second opinion. And I thought, God, what a touch that is having a second opinion. So something that's, you know, often a bit more serious or a bit mm -hmm. more important. Then, you know, don't necessarily listen to what someone's told you. You know, maybe get someone else's version. Interesting. Of it. Okay. Yeah. So, over your time in business, fame. Politics, Charlie being Charlie. Who have you met along the way which Prince Charles stand out significantly? Prince Charles. OBE, Prince Charles, undoubtedly. Is that was that a five minute conversation? Was it a, a day? Is it someone that you've spoken to often? Um, well I've met him a few times, but you know, I got OBE off him and you know that that's the most I would say influential person or, or to me kind of thing, and you know I've met him a few times. So he would that. he would he would be above uh, the gentleman that you idolised as a plumber as a no, child. not above that. But you didn't say that, did you? Uh, I'd, say you I'd say people that you've met through the years, which well, I, I, I know met, you've mentioned like Mickey Flanagan, but people that you've yeah. you've spoken with that you've gone wow. Uh, one, I didn't expect that, and two, they had a lot of time for me because as you you know as you've fitted yeah, well, look, into, look, I doubt it was Bill Ellis. But, you know, I've met loads of so-called celebrities and loads of important people. You, you because you can see the talk from the walk. That's one thing. Yeah. Cause, but, you know... And I've met a few prime ministers. You know, okay. but, but the, the one of, of, of what we call one of the posh lot that impressed me the most was Prince Charles. <laughs> or King Charles. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? And, uh, and uh, you know, yeah, that was it. I was just saying that's the most... Like important person I've met, and and that's the one, and getting the OBE at the same time. I mean, it's like something you could, you know, well you wouldn't even dream about. I didn't even know what OBE was at the time. Yeah, like, you know sure. what I mean. And then to get that, and to get it for businesses, like a lot of people get it for charity. Don't get me wrong, I'm a very charitable person, a great believer of it. But I actually got it for plumbing services and apprentices and that type of thing. So to me, it's a meaningful, you know, okay. you know, I didn't work my way in it, and people always go. They go, 
Oh, you know, how much you pay for that? I was, well, I was, that was what I was about to say. A lot of people are trying yeah. to think they buy the way to the OBU yeah. well, or buy the I, way to... Yeah, well, if I could have bought it, I would have bought a night, wouldn't I? I mean, it ain't complicated, <laughs> is it? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, OK. But, um, so he's the most, uh, like, what I would call the most eyes level person I've met. And, and, and then what about people as in, uh, obviously, uh, the gentleman that you followed as, uh, yeah, when you were... Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone else along the way? Alfie Best is, a, is, is a, you know... Uh, a good, um, a good guy that uh, has come from nothing, kind of thing. He's the, is he the gentleman that's done the, the mobile parks? Is that yeah, correct? Traveller, he's traveller. Traveller, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, again, you know, he's very sort of down to earth and come from nothing kind of thing. I mean, there's many people out there that have come from nothing and they, they want to keep it quiet, you know, mm. and, and, but, but there's, there's lots of people that have come from nothing. It's just that, how would you say, you know, that, some people talk about it and some people don't. But I know that, you know, I only I only got where I got because this guy was prepared to tell me, you know, show me what his money was buying him and show mm -hmm. me what he can achieve in life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's like it's like with, you know, I have to say it's like with charity. People say, don't talk about what you give to charity. Well, that's absolutely. Why did you say that? Well, because people have got to learn from you, mm -hmm. right? So. If you don't tell anybody... Oh, I see. Uh, okay, so it's not... Because my challenge with you saying that it isn't a challenge directly. The indirect thing is I have a personal bee in my bonnet, bonnet with people that say they're, they're giving to charity just to make them blow their own trumpet because it also almost becomes not about the charity. Well, you, look... But what, you're, but what you're saying, yeah. I, you're, you're doing it for more about... Actually, look, you're earning more. Yeah. You're doing well. Give back. Yeah, that's right. Well, look, look. People are under the impression you're a plumber, you're greedy, you don't give nothing, right? Mm. And then, because they say you shouldn't say what you give charity. Well, I help a lot of charities, and and I'm happy to say it. In in. Well, I don't think I think you're. Uh, if the only charities that you say you give to charity, you don't say how much you're giving to them. No, but you I'm, don't. I'm, which is fair. But unfortunately, we do live in a world where. Yeah, but, but but I'm saying I don't necessarily sit there and say this much. But I'm saying I'm a, I've actually given a million pounds in twelve months to different charities. Which right? is which is. And, and I'm very proud of that. Yeah. And and I'm just sort of saying this nonsense about don't tell people. How will someone else learn? You know. Mm. How will someone over there all of a sudden they've, they've heard you've done it, like, and then all of a sudden they think, well, maybe I've got to step out a bit. Yeah. So no, I, I'm, I get I'm just that sort of saying of it don't, it, it's like we all learn from somebody. But you but. Uh, the approach of watching someone give to charity and then go, well, actually, I should be giving up charity, that, on face value, is fantastic. But I think we, uh, the, the area we have to be careful not to step in is, which you don't fall within, but I, we see, I'm seeing more of it is where people give to charity to make, to, to, to make themselves feel good. Yeah. Or they're, they're doing it for the wrong reasons. But well, with, of course, with, but, but, but I think you're looking at the negative side of it. You know, most you, people who give to charity, they do it because it makes them feel good. And they're, they're, they're putting something back into it. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, um, you know, we, we work with various charities. The main one's Shooting Star Ross. I've seen, look, we've, I've seen that yeah. on your and, social and, media, which is you, great. You know, I'm, I'm proud to be able to say that I've been involved with them. Don't get me wrong, I think the people that are hands on in work, I mean, it's simple to write a check out no. if you've got DOS. You know what I mean? It's simple. But the people that are actually out there working with them and helping them, they're the, they're, they're the real heroes. But I'm just trying to say is we, we, we don't need to run away with the idea because you're told at school you've got to go to university, you're told you mustn't talk about charity. It's like nonsense, you know what mm. I mean? I'm saying there's, there's different variations and, and we just need to be more open with things, yeah. I think, is what I'm getting at. Okay, you know I mean? which lies along also being more, being more generous because... Well, look, look, the, I, think, the, I think by the, being generous it makes you work harder, if you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. Because you think, you know, I've got, I've got to put a few... It's nice, it's nice to be able to be generous. Well, uh, of course it is, yeah, yeah. It's, of course it is, you know. Um, yeah, there's, 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 I, I'm just sort of saying I ain't the normal guy you'd be interviewing. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 we know that. Well, I knew oh, that. You know that. Yeah, well, I knew that. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and, and I'm just saying there it is, and I'm just saying to people that you know it worked for me what I've done, and and the the first step is getting a job. Yeah. Which for for youngsters out there is something which you need to look at. Get a job. Just and get hopefully a job. Hopefully yeah. we can but get. Uh, everybody starts from like, like ten thousand mile journey starts from the first step. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and it's a bit like, you know, and as I say, like, when people used to say to me, oh, you, you weren't that great at school, you weren't that, oh, I'm not bothered about school. The school yeah. is just part of your journey. You know, you're, you're, you get educated in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, there's no experience, there's no, like, 
better value than, than hands on or doing something. Yeah, of course. You know, sitting, well, be, sitting in a school and learning another, like, f-ing logarithms or whatever they call, like, another, or Latin <laughs> or something. Obviously, you know someone I mean? who's very educational and very, uh, I'd say, maybe uh, intellect would probably say, well, I enjoy doing that, but yeah. I suppose if you're going to be a, a mathematician or a uni well, professor, course, you, I mean, you kind of need to go to yeah, that. Yeah, look, 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 look. One you get, size don't fit always sure. is a better way of putting it. But I'm just saying. But the second, like, but the second option of getting a job or actually having a funded apprenticeship is something which actually opens up a huge avenue. That's what because there is a huge amount of children that they leave school. I have it with my nieces, uh, who are, you know, they've just left. Yeah. They no, they don't know what they're doing. Oh, you know, well, a lot of the young kids because they haven't it. got the yeah. direction. So it's uni or job. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And apprenticeship is if they, if they. Well, if they they'll sit on the fence a bit because they don't understand really. Well, what they don't it understand. Because it's not promoted, but Correct. but you know, I'm just saying my success is down to my apprenticeship. Okay. You know, and, and the first step was looking at someone that's been successful mm-hmm. and then getting involved with it. And and I'm just saying this. My advice to anybody that, that wants to be successful is get an apprenticeship. Okay. Excellent. Right. Um, book. Just a couple of off the cuff things. Books. You you a reader? Are you a book reader? What do you think? No, you're not. You probably well, never. You... Oh, I haven't even read my own book. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a book reader. I mean, yeah. So the first. Wrong with uh, that. Wow. That's, there's nothing that's wrong with a, that, is it? There's nothing wrong with it, but that's a that's quite that's quite a special uh, position to put yourself in because you know that old saying: a fool learns from his own mistakes; a wise man learns from a fool's mistakes. Sometimes reading books can help. Look, you I'm, become I'm the wise man. It. I'm not knocking education. I'm not knocking it, but I'm being honest. You know, I wrote a book and I've never read it. You know what I mean? But I know it's a good book because, <laughs> well, because it's, it, it's success. Yeah, and, no, and, I get it. And get people it. that read it and they go to me, oh, blimey, I'm following that system. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I'm thinking, to me, it was straightforward, wow. if you know what I mean. You know, this is what we've done and the highs and the lows. and, um, but But, like, you know, so, so you uh, wouldn't, so you wouldn't, um, so you, like, do you do, like, audio, you're not even, you wouldn't even do an audio book? Like, you wouldn't list, like, the biography, anything like that? You wouldn't... For what? A biography or an autobiography, you wouldn't listen to one or read one? Of somebody else's? Yeah, of somebody else's. No. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I, no, I no, okay. I haven't. I mean, what I mean is, you know, I see, I could see successful people with my eyes, you know, and, you know, you can, you, you, know, you know, you can sit there reading books all day long. Does it make you successful? The answer's no. You know what I mean? It's all, it's all about just going out and getting involved in something. You know what I mean? I mean, as I said to you, you know, uh, people used to say to me, do you send your kids to university? And I said, well, they're too clever to go to university. They come and work with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> why, why would you go to university when, you, you know, you, you yeah, may be... Okay. You, you know, I'm not saying it, it works for everybody, but I'm just saying there's a lot of people think there's only one road to success. Mm-hmm. And believe me, you don't need brains. You don't need, like, great education. What you need is a job and a bit of drive. I'll go with that. I get that. Right. Yeah. And just to wrap it up, which you was probably going to, people say, like, it's very trendy to be a plumber, right? And Einstein reckons that if he had his life again, he would come back as a plumber, yeah? Do you know that? No, I didn't. Einstein yeah. said that, yeah. did he? he said that. Well, I'll tell you again, if I had my life again, I'd come back as Einstein. <laughs> 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 That's quite funny, isn't it? I mean, the, the, not to you be a plumber. What, what have you done, Charlie? I'll you set him off. Him. I'll come back as him, I would. That's quite clever, isn't it? I was yeah, actually about to ask you, have you got a favourite quote? You got any, you got, you, you're got? a man of many quotes, but... Loads what, of them. You know, what, man, what ones do you live by? Uh, I would say, man had never made a mistake, never made a call, right? I would say it's my best one. You take the out, never made nothing, right? So that's my best one. And like the ten thousand mile journey starts with the first step, and which is, you know, what's amazing? That's that's almost. I could say that's almost from a book. There's a book called Ten. I'm not. Are you a golfer? I'm not a golfer. No. There's a book called Ten Thousand Hours, and uh, it's about you spend ten thousand hours on anything, and yeah. you will master it, or you will be like top elite oh, right. on anything. Yeah. But that step quote is written all over that book. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you so know, that's every, one of your favourites. What else you got for us, Charlie? It's, um, it, 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 I've got many sayings, and you know, you come out of them according to the situation, kind of thing. But, um, but I think my favourite one used to be when you made a mistake. You know, man, never made a mistake, never made nothing. I mean, I know people that like, you know, they do everything right, but they've, got, they've done nothing in their life. You know what I mean? And yeah. and I've done a lot wrong in my life. You know, I so, say, you know, this nearly went, and yeah. a couple of marriages, and a few other bits and pieces. Um, but you know, 
I think you've got to make these mistakes. And that sounds corny because, you know, you hear these, some people go, oh, yeah, you know, you learn from your mistakes. Well, it's, it's true. It happens to be true. It's not necessarily corny because some people are scared of making mistakes. Yeah, of course so. But they never make nothing, do they? They're, they're too scared, you know what I mean? It's even a life, it's even a life attitude. It, it doesn't create an attitude of, uh, I'm not sure how to put it, but even, in pers- even personally, as in trying something different, let's just do the That's same right, that yeah. we've done for the last 20 years. Because yeah. that happens a lot in plumbing. We've sat down with a guy called Adam Chapman. He does Air Source Heat Pumps, Heat Geek. And he, he said, Charlie, that, and he's right, and I'm sure you've come across it, why do we do things as plumbers the way we do? And his saying is, is because that's just the way it's always been done. And you're like, yeah, yeah. but why has it always been done that way? That's right, yeah. Yeah, people, look, people don't like change. And, and it's usually because people don't want to make, make a mistake. Like, I've tried yeah, this. Oh. Many, it's like, like, many people say to me, look, there's millions of plumbing companies out there. How comes your one successful? And, and, and undoubtedly, it's Bam. because we're different. And, you know, people ask this question about PR and how important it is. And, and I'm looking, I'm thinking, if you're asking that question, then you, you can't be running a business because you've got to have PR. Yeah. You know, it's like saying you've got to have a computer. I mean, I can hardly turn one on. I just about turn one on. But I've got, I've got enough brains to pay someone that can do everything with it kind of thing. And, you know, the importance of PR in a business is priceless. You know, uh, I, I put a lot of... You did that, you did that. that well, that's I, still your niche, like... Yeah, yeah and, and like, you know, it ain't something that I set out to do, but, you know, the PR, you know, people used to say to me, oh, you was on the telly the other day and you said the wrong thing. Well, I'd rather it be me on the telly than your company, you know what I mean? And, and that's what you've got to keep remembering. And, you know, I mean, when we done our first documentary and, and the, I think it was for the BBC, and that was like, oh, I can't even remember it. But anyhow, um, but, I don't know, anyhow, 11 years ago, whatever. And, and I didn't get it at the time, and the woman at the BBC... Who was, who was the producer, said to me, you've just had £10 million pounds of advertisement. I think it was a million pounds an hour, the way it works out on the rates, you know what I mean? Right. Now, when she said that, and I'm thinking, why did you tell me that like, while we was doing it? Because I'd have been, like, even more. But yeah. when you learn that and you think, she said, well, I couldn't tell you it, she because it ain't what we... She said, but you've just had £10 million, pounds, prime TV, wow. hour documentary. Wow. And so now, so, of course, when I've heard that, I'm like, you know, I mean... You know, I'd go to the opening of a fridge now, opening of an envelope, opening of a bag of crisps. So you've got to get recognition. Mm-hmm. And if you happen to get recognition for the right reason, then you've got it right. But, okay. you know, there's a reason people say to me, like, you know, you know, how good is this publicity? How good is that? And, how good? and I said, look, there's a reason why big shops, they go in the mm-hmm. high street and not in the back street. You know what I mean? There's a reason. The reason is to get seen and get recognition. And that's what you've got to do in business. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, it's whether you're a sportsman. So or you you would agree? People say there's no such thing as bad publicity. Would you agree with that statement? I'll say that again. No such thing as bad publicity. Well, I well, mean, it, I suppose it's depending what you're doing. Oh, look, look. I mean, I don't know. I necessarily agree with that. But what I'm saying is, I've had some bad things. They've written. I'm a tax dodger and all <laughs> some paper, which is nonsense. And I've done self-employed people because it was a great saving. No, it was a great drive. For I, know, I know. I know. I uh, know. Well, speaking to a few uh, plumbers, yeah. they're like, oh. Uh, you know this and this, and you're like, you know what? You push boundaries. That's it. It's in your nature. Yeah. Push boundaries and bound. You know, I, I know. Uh, someone told me years ago. Maybe you've heard this old saying: "Rules are for fools, and guidelines guide the wise." Oh, I think and I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an old, Look. it's an old, it's an old saying because it goes back to doing things the way we always did, and also not being yeah. scared of making mistakes. Well, well they're, they're, like, they're, there's a lot of these sayings that are out there, and they're out there for a reason. You know mm. what I mean? Like square pegs, round holes. Yeah. Like you know, and and. The, the, the people that have come up with them have, 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 have proven that what, they, what they're saying right. It's what, mm-hmm. like, you know, man who never made the mistake, never made nothing. Which is, thing. which is... You know, it's the same yeah, thing. So yeah. them sayings are, are there for a reason. And, and you know, you, you have to listen to them things. And I, so I use this word, we all learn from somebody. You know what I mean? We, we don't necessarily come up with anything new. We adapt it. It's like a plumber, you know, he's plumbing the sink in, he's plumbing the sink in. But all of a sudden, you know, we change that to, you know, he's smart, he turns up on time, he's, he's uh, transparent, he finishes the job, he's... Um, I can't think of anything. Uh, but but all, the, all the bits that just, you know, and it ain't nothing clever, it's just doing it the right way. Okay. You know, it ain't nothing clever at all. And, you know, as I said to you, it weren't that we was that great, the rest was that bad. But... The, the image of, of the industry's changed a lot now. Everybody's up their game mm-hmm. and, you know, the public want more for their money and people will always pay for quality. It's, an, it's another so, thing. So that leads me on to kind of one last thing. 
So people want value. People want change. And the industry has stepped up its game. You're entering the arena. You're, <laughs> you're throwing your hat back into the ring. Yeah, well, look. Okay, yeah. I mean, look, we sold Pimlico and... Um, we, we, we entered into a three-year clause not to open mm -hmm. up and the, the three years will be up next September and we'll have a new business called um, we Fix, uh, the We Fix team and uh, it'll be a, a, um, a real top quality company. We're going to employ less people. We're going to obviously get the apprentices on. That's, that's the first thing for sure. Um, but it will be a very much uh, an upgrade of, of the old company. Wow. And very much a family business and... You know, so, am I confident about it? Of course I am. You know, we know it's more difficult now getting around and this is difficult, but, you know, shortage of tradesmen, it just means that, you know, I mean, if you think plumbers are dear now, just wait for another year or so, you know what I mean? And I'm not, I'm not doing it for the money, believe it or not, I'm not sure what does. You're, uh, you're throwing your hat into the arena and you're going to raise the plumbing the game even, again, more, even yeah, more. Again, yeah, for sure. Because, again, you, you learn all these things... And, you know, I still have a say market manager and his ideas are great. And, you know, I think we was the top of the game before. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I don't see why we won't be again, you know. You, you just doing plumbing? Or no, no, plumbing, eating and all the You're going to, yeah? yeah? yeah. You're going to yeah. go for the... For the and and I think you should say to me, you know, do you ever worry about competitors and all that? You know, there's enough work out there for everybody. Mm -hmm. There's enough work, you know, and the customer has a choice. You know, so you, you don't worry about what the competitor's doing or what he's charging. I mean, you know, you've got to charge a certain rate in London. If not, you go bust in here. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's playing it and don't charge the right rate, they're not even a competitor because they're mm. going to go, you know what I mean? So, you well, know, but One thing that we know, we've got a few clients in London. Um, London, the costs have gone up. Obviously, we know why. You know, parking, yeah. congestion, you les, um, that has to be charged. The of customer course. has to pay for that. Of course. But, but again, you know, that's what I'm saying to you. You, you. You've got to put that in the rate, but people will always pay the quality. So if you happen to be £200 an hour and, and you're top dollar, people will pay it. Mm -hmm. If you want 200 an hour and you're yeah. they won't pay it. Yeah, people will sure. always pay the quality. Yeah, for sure. And, and I, I'm just sort of saying is that, that, you know, it's like myself, if I use anybody now, it could be difficult to get people, but, you know, I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay whatever to get the right job done. Mm. You know, and, and if you're in that position, and I'm not saying this trying to be cocky, but, you know, there's, it, London, there's a lot of wealthy people in there. And, you know, they don't want to be messed about where the plumber don't turn up. And, you know, they, they, they may be politicians, they may be, you know, in, in showbiz. You know, all they want is the job done. Yeah, for sure. You, well, you know how it works. And, and it's going to be quite a tough... I, I, I think it'd be t quite tough here to do an air conditioning call out in this room and then find Charlie Mullins in the room. Because really. if I'm not wearing overshoes and dushies, well, yeah, you're, right, you're probably you're going right. to throw me but, off but the balcony. Then, it's not tough. I mean, look... <laughs> We don't have people in here that ain't right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We've checked you out <laughs> before you come in. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that you're right. Look, if someone comes into your house... I passed really the Charlie Mullins <laughs> approval. You know what? That's, that does it for me. But, but that's right. Look, I, I remember when, you know, when I've had houses wherever in Kent and that, and I've had people turn up tradesmen, and, and I'll have someone that's running it. That obviously, not what I mean. I'll tell them they're not coming in. I go, why um, is that? Well, you seen the guy? He's actually that on the, on the thing. He's got finger in his mouth, he's talking like loud, he's talking I said, just tell him to go, you know what I mean? But, you know, not everybody's like that, and it's not as simple as that, but, you, you know, if you've got set certain standards, and, and rightly, you know, you know, I know of you guys, I know of the podcast, and I know that, you know, a lot of people are going to learn from this, but if he was like a two-bob outfit, sure. or like, you know... I, I kind of feel, though, if even if we were, I think you'd probably give us the, uh, the light of day. So what's that mean? I think if we were two, Bob, yeah. and we were still in, still working out of a garage, I think you may go, well, actually, they look like they go in places. They look like they actually care well, yeah, about look, what they look, do. You, you, know, you give them a light of day. But no, I get what you're saying. If yeah. the standards are poor and it's just yeah. a load of waffle, well, you're not going to What I'm trying to say is I can see the driving enthusiasm and, and your setup. Which so I appreciate you saying. I really appreciate and, you saying. And, and I'm saying, you know, I could do, a, I don't know, thousand podcasts a week kind of thing. So I think I could do a thousand podcasts with you on, on, on technical plumbing stuff. Because you need to have it standards. Were you the same with products? Would you only yeah. go for the higher products? Well, yeah, I mean... Would you... Yeah. You would... Straight oh, away, yeah. you would just oh, say, yeah. we won't deal with none of the... Because we have it in Aircon. You have some of the cheaper brands. I'm yeah, not going to no, mention no, no. them. Where they... Short term, they can increase your margin. I suppose you yeah. probably have it cheap boilers, right? Well, you yeah. Would, you wouldn't... Yeah, well... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boilers. But you wouldn't... You wouldn't even entertain it? No. 
Now, we're not a cut price outfit, you know, and, and if you're a cut price outfit, then, but we're not, you know, we're saying to somebody, if you want to use us, you know, we're not cheap, we're not the dearest people in the world, but we get it right. And the products that you would put in oh, would be. Yeah, top quality. Yeah, oh, for sure, because why would you want to use sort of cheap stuff or a boiler that's going to keep breaking down? Mm. And as I, I go back to what I'm saying, people will always pay the quality, and yes, they want value for money. You know, and, you know, so we won't get, like, you know, Mrs Smith on the council estate ringing us up, but we get Mrs Smith in Eaton Square ringing yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and I'm not saying, you know, there's a difference of people, but... That you was know, your mar model of market. Yeah, I mean, look, it's easier to get money off people that have got money than people that ain't got money. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 and that's not exploiting it, but there's a certain rate you need to charge in London mm -hmm. to run a successful business. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, and it, it ain't a cheap rate, but everybody's got a gain out of it. So the customer's got to get a quality service, the business has got to make money, and the plumber's got to be engineered well rewarded. It's all okay. about sort of like, you know, you know, it's not all about like a, a greedy businessman, you know yeah. what I mean? That's it's almost sure. like um, an octopus with different tentacles. You've got, to, you've got to have different elements as you just rolled off yeah. for it to become complete. To be successful, you've got to have, the workforce makes you successful. Mm -hmm. And you've got to reward them with it. And, and you know, whatever people want to say about it. It's like when the COVID was on, we were still allowed to carry on working. Mm -hmm. We had no problem at all. We used to give them 20 quid a day extra. They have three mil in a canteen. It's oh, all wow. office stuff. And give them parking, right? Good on you. People couldn't come and work quick enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, 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 and the, the wrong ones that, you know... Oh, didn't, like, didn't want to work. The, the usual type. The, well, the ones that would phone in sick or the ones that wouldn't well, want to... Exactly. The ones that get this mystery Monday and Friday illness. I've never... I've, I've been workplace for years. I've never had that thing. But they get it. They don't... No one knows what it is, but it comes every Monday and Friday. Yeah. And and I could tell... I, I'd, I'd be talking to someone in the week and they go, uh, oh, you know what? I don't feel that good. I said, oh, you're off Friday then. They go, no, no, oh, no I want to come. I'll go, try it, no. And then well, they're off Friday. Then... The ones on Friday say, do you know what? I don't know. I, I, I don't feel that good. Like, I don't, you know, they're not saying... I say, you've, I think, you've, you've obviously seen a hell of a lot more excuses than me, but yeah, the Monday, Friday course, illness yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, is one of them. Yeah. yeah. And they read it like a book. They go, oh, you know, I say, so you won't be in Monday then. And then all of a sudden they ring up Monday, or they start getting a toothache on a Friday, you know what I mean? Yeah. He can't have any teeth the, the amount of time. How many teeth? He's, he must have lost all his teeth. Yeah. You know what I mean? They go, dentist, 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 dentist. I mean, I, know, I, mean, I think myself... Anyhow, but yeah, what was the question? With, with Pimlico as well, um, and I'm going to answer it because I know you did. You stepped into the aircon ring when you were at Pimlico, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. How, how did you, what, what how, was I that just, was, you were just upselling your customer base? Well, I think, yeah, you, you know, I think we're getting more summers now, they say, don't we? And, 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 and you know, more and more people's wanting it. And uh, so we introduced it, yeah. But again, I'm not saying I'm the brains behind that. No, I'm, I'm not saying you are. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm, but you, you, yeah, you well, got look, into look, that look, arena. I think, you know, yourself that, our Pimlico start was just a plumbing, and then you have the customer saying, or oh, you need an electrician. And, and we, I, I know just there's, found Pimlico, at the time. there's Pimlico Electrics. Yeah, but when you I'm, have a lot of work for electricians, you do have that conversation with yourself. You say, well, I've got an electrician out with us five days right. a week. Yeah. Why don't we just employ someone? Or why yeah, don't well, we... the thing is, we were struggling to get good tradesmen to come when I was doing the jobs. Okay. And I'll get some of these people turn up, and I'll think, oh, I can't believe it. You know, he's just clueless. Like, you know what I mean? And, about like in and out and all that and then you know people often use that well can you recommend somebody so yeah. we found at the time you know it's difficult i'm not saying they're not some good guys out there so we took our own on and we had the same standards and and you know you just a customer it. will you know if she's happy with your plumbing she's gonna you know have you got someone can put me yeah. a door on kind of thing it all sort of goes hand in hand in hand and uh and on, so, the, bus on the business side of things is that saying yeah, don't, leave uh, don't leave money on the table yeah. Because I suppose there is there is that. I mean, look, let's not kid him. There's some great trades people out there. Let's not kid anybody. You know, there, there, there's some really good people out there. And, um, you know, obviously there's some bad ones. But, you know, we, we I don't think we need to talk about the, the negative ones, like the school kids at school, you know. Yeah. Ones with attitude, like, yeah, but, you, you know, they, they people can change. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? A lot. When, when I say when I left school, when I was at school, I weren't going nowhere. You know what I mean? According to this teacher, like, you know yeah. what I mean? He, couldn't be interested in it. He mm. was like, oh, um, and I said, I've got an apprenticeship in plumbing. And he was like, oh, okay. Like, as if it was like a, like knocking you down kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But, but it was looked down on then as, as you know, you're not that clever, so you ain't working in a bank and all that, and you ain't gone there. And, okay, best thing i ever done, you know what I mean? Best thing i ever done. Okay. Right. We've got two gifts for you. Okay. 
Jensen? So, Charlie, um, I just want to thank you. You were Obviously, we, we've managed to set this up. The process of setting this up with you has been incredibly straightforward. Um, we've had some people which want an arm and a leg. You've been, it's yeah. been really straightforward. You've given up your time. For me, this is a bit of an achievement to actually sit in a room with you where it was always chucked. I've even, this was an old tie. That was taken from you. You were yeah, the only the man to put yeah. your brand on your yeah. tie. Yeah. Um, so as a thank you, we've got a couple of small gifts. One of them is a book. Yeah. <laughs> which it, you, you may read called Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not the Bible, but it's got a lot of good practical ways of life. Yeah. Um, which may create value. The other is which something special. Is something, something okay. special. Right. So, um, so do I open it now? Uh, it's entirely up to oh, you. I, you can it, open it off air. I don't know what you like um, with us. Uh, I'm not good at presents. You're the same. So, we'll do it off air. Uh, you're the same uh, as me. And and on the Christianity thing, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm a great believer that um, you know there's someone up there helping us. You know, and I'm not preaching anything to anybody. Preach all you want, you Charlie. Know, yeah, um, yeah. But you know. Undoubtedly, there's there's someone up there helping us, and and you know, believe it or not, you know, I go to church. Okay. You know, more more so when I'm abroad, but um, it, again, it doesn't make me wrong or right, but um, you know, I'm very grateful for, you know, where I am today. I'm very grateful that you know, it's me that you're asking to do a podcast rather than the guy who's sitting next to me at school, mm. and and you know, I think you've got to show your gratitude back, but. The, re the real reason for me doing a podcast is I know the value of what someone will pick up from it. You know what I mean? And it might have 10 people who just go, oh, an idiot, don't listen to him. And you'll get someone go, boom, I'm going to do that. And we all learn from someone. Yeah. You're, uh, you're, you, we could call you the king of PR because you're spot on. <laughs> ten, 10 people know you exist. Even uh, everyone in Aircon might, wouldn't even, may not even know Charlie Mullins, Pimlico Plumbers, but... Founder of Pimlico Plumbers. Yeah. Now it's. I mean, look. You, you, but you, now they know you. Just you. You get a lot of recognition, and and you know when you go up in it, and it's lovely. People come up. You nine out of ten people like you, and you've got the the odd pest that don't like you. But mm. you know, it, it's like it's all about sort of majority. It's like you know when we was running the business, we couldn't get everything right, but we got majority of it right. And 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 you know people used to say to me, "You're not bothered. You make a mistake." I said, "But you've got to make these mistakes." I said, "But if I go through the day and we do ten things and I get eight of them right, I'll practice. You know? As long as it's over the half, <laughs> yeah, right, for you sure. Know what I mean, well, you know, anyhow. But it's been a, a good, good interview, and I think you've got a great setup. And, Thank you uh, very much, Charlie. You know, I, I have to say that you know, people, we all learn from someone. That's a great thing to remember because you know, we. So I, you know, I've just got my tailor come now, like, and you know, and. Uh, and I met him at, um, I think, a conservative, uh, I don't know what they call it now, the big thing went out up in Birmingham. And he come up to me and started saying, the suit you've got on ain't that great, like, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, shit, <laughs> right? and, then, and then, you know, I said to him, and then, and then all of a sudden he said, look, I'll make your suit. And he was spot on. I've used him. Ian, how long have I been using you for? Sorry? How long have I been using you for? I've been about uh, six years. Oh, it's got to be longer than that. It's got to be longer than that. Portion I'll give you. <laughs> so anyhow, that's Ian the Taylor. Ian and, the Taylor. Uh, he, he, he gives you East End suits at West End prices. Wee. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, but no, no. But uh, it must be more than six. It was a conservative function, wasn't it? Come on, don't don't be shy. So you start. So you start. You started your introduction to Charlie Mullins with an insult. I did, yeah. Yeah. Damn. What an eye But I mean, look how smart he is. You know what I mean? I mean. He's out of camera. Hey. Oh, oh yeah, I'll come round here. Sorry. Don't stand like that, so it starts. <laughs> no. So he started with an insult. What a chap line. Start with an insult and then go in for the compliment. Yeah. yeah. But but he came over and it I thought... It was a terrible suit. I mean, I oh, yeah, but it was, a, it was a Savile Row suit and I'm thinking, oh, well, wow. like, I can't believe this geezer. And then, you know, I think he made one and, that, and uh, yeah, the big break. See, I mean, look how smart he is, you know what I mean? So, he, you know, I, th I think that's wonderful, but people will always pay for quality. Mm. And... Um, yeah, there you go, you've had a bit of free advertising. Where, where, what's, where, the what, what's, the suit, what's the suit company? Fielding and Nicholson. Fielding and Nicholson. Where are you based? In, uh, in the West End, just off Savile Road. Fantastic. Yeah, but That's where you get your suits from. Yes. Good Thank suits you. from. Great but, suits. But from. again, I'm saying, people will always pay for quality, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and uh, you know, I was paying for quality it looks and it just weren't right, but... Um, you know, this, this guy's sort of amazing. I mean, look, 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 I feel like I'm overselling him, but what I mean is, 
I'm trying to justify all these facts. So, so our, our next goal is going to get Charlie Mullins to sell us. Yeah. To sell, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's a wrap. Episode three, complete.